This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. When the children of Israel were delivered out of, out of slavery, it wasn't because of be good behavior. That was the grace of God. When he led them through the wilderness by daytime and, 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 and a cloud by day guided them, that was the grace of God. When he led them at night by a pillar of fire, that was the grace of God. When he fed them manna, that was the grace of God. And then when he gave them water out of a rock, there's a pretty picture of grace versus law. God told Moses, speak to the rock and I'll bring water out. Because, man, this is grace working. You know what? He says, I ain't going to speak to it. I'm going to beat it with a stick. That's self-effort trying to make it happen on your own. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know. You love the city stay. It's time we live a new life. Let us not try riding you. The same by his grace so we Look at what your Jesus has done for you. He says you can't keep 613 commandments trusting in your own effort. So what I'm going to do is deliver you from all of that, and I'm going to bring you over here to my law. And here's what my law said. If you believe on the name, no, I don't even want to say it. Let me show it to you. 1 John 3. Yes, sir. 1 John 3. 1 John 3. And verse 22, let's start there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Deliverance in this house. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments, Jesus' commandments. And we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Come on, verse 23. And this is his commandment. <laughs> so glad they wrote it down. <laughs> and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, or believe on the authority of Jesus Christ, on the finished works of Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he gave us a commandment to love. Somebody says, well, wait a minute, how do you know that there's a distinction between that and the other? Because the Bible says to love the Lord God, your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. All right, go to, go to 1 John 5, 1 through 3. 1 John 5, 1 through 3. Mm-hmm. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. Mm -hmm. Go on, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. You just read what his commandments is? Verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Now, how do I know that this is his commandment? Because his commandments are not grievous. The law of Moses, lots of grief, lots of loss, lots of shame. When you can't keep the Ten Commandments or the rest of them, all that guilt and shame and condemnation comes. But when un under this commandment, it's not grievous. It's not grievous. There's no shame that comes. Hallelujah. Why? Because you believe God loves you. See, under the old covenant, it was all about how much you love God. But under this new covenant, it's all about you believing the love that he has for you. See, he gave you his love. Hallelujah. Under the old covenant, you had the love in your own natural ability. Under the new covenant, Romans 5 and 5, he gave the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost poured the love of God on the inside of you and gave you his supernatural love. And because he loved you first, now you can love what's unlovely second. Because he loved you first, then you can love what hurts second. Because he loved you first, then you can forgive yourself and love yourself because he gave you what you needed to operate in this love. He not only gave you the law of love, but he provided you with the supernatural ability to do it. Under this covenant of grace, under this new covenant, there is a law. We ain't just got 613 of them. Here's how awesome Jesus is. Keep this one by trusting me. Hey, you ain't going to be able to do this on your own. You try to love in your own effort, and you're a cousin of mine. 
you say, I'm going to forgive you because God, I can't. Bam. But you're going to need to trust in Jesus. Lord, I trust that you love me. I trust that you have enabled me to be able to love. And now, instead of you trusting your own efforts to try to keep the commandments, you're trusting Jesus, and he's enabled you to be able to keep this one law. He delivered you from 613, or he delivered you from the Big Ten, down to one law. And he says, by doing this one, if you do this one, you won't kill, you won't steal, you won't covet, you won't do all the stuff you were trying to do in yourself effort and by trusting me I will enable you by the Holy Spirit to be able to do everything you couldn't do in your own self effort the law of liberty the perfect law of liberty now if a man doesn't understand that and he doesn't see that contrast I'm going around here preaching on You've been, I, well, I ain't preaching, I'm just reading the Bible. You've been set free from the, from the law of Moses, and then you're thinking, well, wait a minute, and then go use the wrong scripture to try to prove that I'm wrong when I tell you that you deliver from the law of Moses. You are delivered from the law of Moses into the law of Jesus. My Bible tells me that he, he, he didn't deliver us from the Ten Commandments because he says you got to, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. His commandments, not Moses's. And there's some work that could be done on that statement because I know it came from God and it's perfect and it's holy, but it's too perfect for you to keep. Look at Hebrews chapter 8. And, and, and verse 6, you have to understand this, man, or you'll, you'll keep, every time I say you're delivered from the law, then you go and use the wrong scriptures in the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to do that? Let's do that then. Hebrews 8 and 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. <laughs> verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So I says, well, what was the fault? You just said it was holy. Yeah, it is holy. It is perfect, but we were not. And that was the problem. For finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a what? New covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Aaron, of Judah. In verse 9, he says, and I'm not going to make the new covenant like the old one, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Verse 10, he says, for this covenant, this is the covenant that I'm going to make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I'm going to put my laws in their mind, and I'm going to write them in their hearts. Romans 5 and 5, and I will be to them a God. Now you got a God, and they shall be to me a people. He's not talking about writing the 613 laws of Moses on your heart. Well, there's something about a Christian. When the law of love is on the, on the inside of you and you do something stupid, it's in there. It comes up. When you mean to somebody, it comes up. You ain't going to be able to go to sleep and just let it go. It'll bother you just a little bit. That's the Holy Ghost saying, now you know you shouldn't have did that. You get up there and left her a 50 cent tip and she makes her living off her tips and she just served you well and you had the money to do it with your little cheap self, but you walked away and did not properly tip that person. Something in your heart, the love that he wrote on you, it's like, it's, it's, it's a guide. It's like that thing in the car, that, that, that what's that, the, the navigation system. Yeah, double what, navigation system. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He has given us a navigation system, hallelujah. It'll navigate you to what's right and what's wrong. Now, you might not correct it and respond right away, but you're going to know that ain't right. That ain't right. You go sleeping around with somebody, some old man going around taking advantage of a, of a, of a young lady because you found out she really liked you, and then you go in there and have sex with her, and then hurt her feelings. I ain't, I ain't want to have nothing to do with you in the first place. I'm just doing that just to do what I need to do. You know that ain't right. You messing somebody's wife up. But that's all right, 
God got somebody that's got so much love that he's going to be able to repair the damage that you caused. And, and, and it ain't like you're just going to forget about it. You'll never forget the day that you just miss it and you just miss God and hurt somebody. Then you, got a, you got a navigation system on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost will speak to you just like your navigation system. Turn right, turn left, you've arrived at your destination. But I'm going to tell you something else the Holy Ghost will do. Even when you mess up, he know how to reroute, reroute. He know how to get you to go to the place where you need to go. I'll write my law on your heart. I'll write it on your mind. I'll pour my spirit in you and I'll send you the Holy Ghost. They didn't have access to the Holy Spirit living in them as a built-in navigation system. But we do. So we don't need the law of Moses to guide us. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And he will lead us and he will guide us. And he'll take away those old want-tos. And he'll give us new want-tos. And the stuff we used to want to do, we ain't going to want to do it no more. And now we look up and we're, we're wanting to do something that pleases God. And we're trying to figure out how did I do that. That's what I'm telling you. It's not by your effort, not by your might, not by your power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And that Holy Ghost is moving in you, directing you, and changing you, and transforming you. Why give you 613 laws when I can give you the author? You have the person of the Holy Spirit living in you, talking to you. And you still stuck on your tradition of Cecil Bill, Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments. Oh, I'm going to live by Ten Commandments. It's going to make more. Ten Commandments was never designed to make you holy. The law is like a mirror. It's just going to show you what's wrong with you. The law is like medical dye. If you inject it, it just shows the problem in your body. It is not the cure. You see the contrast? There's the law of Moses. And then there is the authority that has been given to you by God through his grace to activate spiritual laws. What spiritual laws? You have what you say. You cast out demons. Because people are so worried about, well, what do you do? And they confuse what you do through your authority with what you do trying to make yourself righteous and redeemed what Jesus has already done. And you have to, there's a contrast that you have to reconcile that contrast or you'll just start throwing all the things in the, in the Bible together and then end up thinking the wrong way. All right, now let's, let's if, with the time I have left, I'm not, you know, we'll finish it. Let's deal with this sin thing because this is the thing that keeps coming up most. It's like the biggest problem when you teach grace with most people is the issue of sin and money. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a spiritual mammon. Uh, just, it's the, mammon is the motivator behind every crazy thing you see on the earth, including church folks. There are a lot of mammon-driven ministries that they do stuff because the spirit of mammon is using them to say, I trust money more than I trust God. And so you don't have a meeting anymore because that's what God told you to do. You have a meeting so you can help meet your budget. That's motive, mammon's motivating the meeting and not God. Now, you have to deal with, if, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Hebrews 10, 26, the most used scripture I've ever heard when people start talking about well, you telling people that Jesus has set us free from sin, then how come we still sin? You're not making the distinction between sin, the, 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 the person of sin, the sin nature, the noun, versus sinning the actions. See, whatever you think about, you're going to do. <laughs> whatever you consider the most, it will come into action. All right, now, here's the big scripture. And I'm going to read it to you like they take it out of context and read it. 
For if we are sinning willfully, they love, they love doing that. If we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. See that? See that? See that? There ain't no more sacrifices for you because you, what you did, you did it willfully. Ladies and gentlemen, all sin is willful. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yes. There is no such thing as I sin, but I didn't will it. You can't sin without your will. Because you're a free moral agent, all sin is, is willful. Well, I, I, you know, I, 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 golly, I'm in the bed. <laughs> How did I get in this bed? And where is my clothes? And who is this next? Who is this next to me? Oh, Lordy, I done sinned, but it wasn't willful. <laughs> I slipped in it. It wasn't even willful. I just slipped. All sin, say that loud, all sin, all sin is, willful. is willful. Now, the issue is we've got to figure out what was the willful sin that he's talking about him when he said, for if we sin willfully, notice he's going to give some more information. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. What knowledge of truth that was received that if we reject, it's called willful sin? What knowledge, what truth is he talking about here that if we reject would be the willful sin? It is the truth that Jesus is the final sacrifice for a person's sin. It is no longer going to be the blood of animals because the blood of animals covers your sins for a year, but you have to keep coming back every year to get it covered because it could never take away sin. But the blood of Jesus can take away sin once and for all times. So to reject that truth is you sinning willfully. Sin, the willful sin is rejecting the truth that Jesus is the final sacrifice for sin. And if you reject that truth, then there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin because he's the only one that can take away your sin. Okay, let's read it in Scripture. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's add some context to, to all of this now. And what I mean by that is you, you need to back up and read some of the stuff that it says so you can read it in, in context. Now look what he says here, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Uh, and verse 11, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. The animal sacrifices can never take away sin. Verse 14, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The whole chapter is talking about the fact that Jesus is the final sacrifice for sin because his blood can remove it. His blood can take it away. And that's why he mentioned in verse 26, if we sin willfully, what? By rejecting Jesus as the final sacrifice, after that we've received the knowledge that he is the final sacrifice, then ladies and gentlemen, there remaineth no more sacrifice for your sins if you reject Jesus as the final sacrifice. Your dog ain't going to be able to do it for you. I probably shouldn't have said that, but your, your whatever sacrifice, animal sacrifices won't do it for you. All right, so that's what that means. That's what that means. So don't ever pull out Hebrews chapter 10, 26. I don't know what the attempt is. It's like, it's like you're trying to prove to people, see there, if you sin willfully, look at God. He, he, there ain't no more sacrifice for your sin, so you're going to hell. It's like we're working hard to try to condemn people to hell. As if you're not included. If you're going to condemn somebody to hell, for sinning, mm -hmm. then you just condemn yourself to hell for sinning. I, 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 I don't understand that. Well, let me explain it to you. We have created our own rating system for sin. You know, adultery is a 25, okay? Uh, murmuring, complaining is a two. That's not what Jesus said. 
Because if you read in the Old Testament, you, you see the thousands of people that fell dead for complaining. The law was perfect. You didn't get away with nothing. The, the, the law was, was perfect. He didn't get away with nothing. Somebody said to me one time, they said, it's heresy. Now, the heresy is, and I'll prove this to you later on, is when you don't believe that the Holy Spirit can do this. Man. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 6 real quick with the time we have left over. In Romans chapter 6, everywhere you see the word sin, it is referring to your sin nature. There's only one time that it is used as a verb, sinning, and that's in verse 15. So now look at what we've done. Romans 6, verse 1. I'm going to read through this real quick. Look at what we've done. So we're, com we're comparing in contrast. We're looking at the contrast between the sin nature and the action of sin. What shall we say then? Yeah, I'll back up, Lord, I'll say that. So you're, you're, you're thinking Jesus has delivered you from not sinning. Well, he did. He gave you equipment to accomplish that by delivering you from the root that caused the sinning. So you have the root to bear the fruit of the Spirit. You have, if you got born again, you have the necessary nature. The Bible calls it a new creation. You have the necessary new creation to bear the fruit of the Spirit. So I said, what's the problem then? Why do we keep sinning? How can you be born again, have a new nature, have the ability to bear the fruit of the Spirit, and still continue to sin? Here's where we're messing up. We won't renew our mind. People just don't care that much about church. People don't. And I, I can't blame them. I, I don't want to waste another 20 years of my life going and listening to Reverend Trimble tell me how bad I am. So most of the time you're going somewhere where your mind's not being renewed. You don't understand what the heck he's talking about in the first place. Yeah. And your mind's not being renewed. So I can get it. But see the problem? Now, when the truth is going forth all over the world right now, people are hurt. They're fed up. I just, I don't want, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. I, I, I'm confused. I, and so I'm, I'm done. And so coming to church is not even about getting the word anymore. Even with the new age, praise and worship, I, I look at it. I look at some millennials, they come and they're all in it, praise and worship. And when the word goes forth, they sleep. And they can't wonder why they can't keep their stuff in their pants. They can't wonder why they can't stop smoking weed all the time. They can't wonder why they can't do a lot of stuff because they ain't never listening to nothing to, to get the equipment to renew your mind to cause you to think differently. You keep thinking the same way because either ain't nothing going forth that's going to help you renew your mind or you ain't listening to it when it's going forth. But when the music is playing and the smoke is out and the lights and everything, oh, you all in there like you and Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Lord, we pray. Uh, and the music stops. You on your phone. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this thing talking about, you know. <laughs> so, so the action of sin continues even when you got rid of the person of sin because in between the person of sin and the action of sin is the software. And you can't, you're trying to go after life with the same old software that you sinned in life with. So the software hadn't changed. So why should the actions change? The software hadn't changed. Don't know about, don't people, people don't come to church like they used to come to church. You know what, when I started, I had to do four services on Sunday, back to back to back to back. And then when we moved in the dome, you know, I had to go to two services after one Sunday. People don't want to hear no word no more. For some reason, they thought because I was on top of the pulpit, I'm flawless, I'm perfect. And when crazy stuff happened, oh, I ain't going to his church no more. He ain't flawless. Well, the church you went to, he ain't flawless either. <laughs> Whatever church you thought was more flawless than the one you left, he ain't, he ain't either, because I know him. He ain't either. <laughs> Everybody in the pulpit got issues. Everybody. And that's where the part of the deception come. When you think you have achieved flawlessness, perfection, and you don't think you need Jesus, I guarantee you, you've entered into a self-righteousness that's deep and hard to get out of. 
How do you see the Christian life? Is it a performance-driven life? Or is it a life depending on Jesus? In this series by Creflo Dollar, you will learn how your outlook on God will affect how you live your life. It, there's certain things that if you don't know and don't understand, you'll walk around thinking that God's a punisher and walk around thinking that God's responsible for giving you cancer or killing this, because it's just what you heard, because nobody rightly divided the word. Get the right perspective of God and walk in all He has for you. He started the work. He's going to finish the work. All will be well. He just needs you to believe. Praise God. Get the Looking Through the Lens of Grace two-message series right now for a love gift of $12.95 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. There is a purpose for your life, and you are meant to do great things. The key to reaching your destiny is to grow in your understanding of God's grace. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. For one low monthly subscription, you'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. In as little as 15 minutes a day, you can study God's Word, be encouraged, and learn how to study the Bible, how to overcome fear, how to better your relationships, and so much more. And the best news, it's free for 30 days. Now is the time for you to take control of your life and join Grace Life Academy. Text GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Stop and reflect on the world around you. Violence, despair, and hopelessness are rising. Families are being ripped apart. Children lost to drugs, and souls across the globe are lost. There's one thing that can make the difference, God's grace. Creflo Dollar has received a vision to help take the message of grace to those that need it most. He is personally asking you to join the 2020 Vision Partnership. Your faithful commitment of less than $1 a day, $5 a week, $20 a month will reach a billion souls in this generation. Your small seed can do so much, like expanding the Changing Your World broadcast, helping battered women, orphan children, and so much more. As his way of saying thank you, you will receive a very special partner kit, a monthly letter from Pastor Dollar's desk, a monthly teaching CD or MP3, personalized confessions to inspire you, exclusive discounts, and so much more. Join the mission. Help reach a billion souls around the globe. Become a 2020 Vision Partner today. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 